Hello everyone, welcome back to another tutorial using Affinity Photo. For this tutorial, we're going to add a sketch effect to a few different photos. Because we want to add this effect to multiple photos, we're going to make life easier on us by creating a macro. A macro is pretty much like a preset in Affinity Photo. It records the operations that you did, and then it'll apply it to whatever photo you want in the future. So first thing, we're going to go up to View go down to studio and then hit macro if you have macros already downloaded or made they'll show up here to create our macro we're gonna hit this red button and it'll start recording all of our operations now that we have that started you cannot right click to duplicate the background you're gonna to have to use your shortcuts so we're going to hit control J and we duplicated our background I'm now going to change the name of that background to Sketch Layer. And we're going to change the blend mode of that down to Color Dodge. We're going to hit the adjustments and we're going to add an, add an invert. Now, with the macro, it can't record moving a layer. So, what we're going to have to do, and this is the only downside of this macro is when you hit this macro you're going to have to manually drag that invert layer down to that sketch layer but we're going to pause the macro drop that invert layer down to our sketch layer not underneath but so it's right next to the photo and then we're going to start our recording again so now that we have that invert layer in our sketch layer we're going to take Select parent layer. Yep. We're going to select the sketch layer, go to our FX menu, and we're going to add a Gaussian blur. You can scroll up and you can see the effect already coming through. The higher you add the Gaussian blur, the more it's going to look like the original photo, and the less you do, it's going to look more like a sketch. Now, where you want that sweet spot for that photo is completely up to you. I like it usually somewhere in the middle, but it can depend on the photo. It can depend on the background. It can depend on how busy the photo is. But I'm liking it right around about 10, 11 pixels. Now you can see that's recorded back on the macro. From here, we're going to go down, back down to our adjustments and hit black and white. Now we can manually control each of these colors. There's one more thing I want to do before I end this macro. And that is, I want to add at least one, if not two more pixel layers on top of that. Now that we have our macro complete, we're going to hit stop recording. And we're going to hit add to library. I'm going to rename this one, sketch effect. And now we have our library, and we can add that sketch effect again. And control Z to undo. But we'll have that sketch effect for our future photos. The reason I wanted to create at least one or two more pixel layers is because there's different effects we can do for our sketches. The first one is if you want to clean up the image a little bit more. Doing black and white is great because we can paint out this part of the background really easy. Um, just select that bottom pixel layer. Increase that brush size. I want hardness down. And we can just paint it out and really touch up some of this background. Now with it being a sketch, you don't need to be super clean. Now for the top pixel layer, this is where we can really add a little bit more creativity into our sketch. I like to go to our flood fill tool. I'm gonna select that. I know my boy likes red, so I'm gonna select red. Pull that saturation up and go get a nice medium red color. And I'm gonna add that to that pixel layer. Now from here, we have a couple different options. To get a few different effects, we can go down here and multiply is a really good option. If you kinda of like that pop art style sketch you can get. You can go back into that black and white layer and control each color individually so they blend better with the color effect that you want for that photo. After multiply, I like to add a color burn. 
color burn can add a weird effect to your photo um, especially around the edges if you see right there how we can get rid of those that red edge is we're gonna go back into our sketch layer hit that FX and then for the Gaussian blur hit preserve alpha and then it's gonna get rid of that little border that comes in from blending the layer now color burn is really cool if you go lighter or darker it's gonna change how much this effect is actually affecting the photo so if we go to a lighter color you have a much cleaner sketch Let's just go down to 65 you can see how much just those nine little things nine little notches can affect it if we go down a little bit more we can go down to 50 you can see a lot now once you hit about midpoint the darker you go you're actually just going to start bringing out darker lines you're going to add in some of the black lines into it so let's drop it down to 10 and you can see it's not really adding too much more texture all it's really doing is making those hard outlines black. Control Z to undo, so we're up to 35. Control Y for 10. You can just see you get that really black effect, but you get that red texture effect for all the medium colors. And we're gonna keep going down the line. Overlay is another good one. You can scroll through and see how these blend effects are gonna affect each photo. But I like to go down to overlay. Overlay creates all the colors in red. We can add that pixel layer back on to clean that background up. But it just creates that nice red pencil effect or whatever color you want. If we wanted blue, we can just add blue. And now you have that blue pencil effect. After overlay, we also have vivid light. Vivid light can be like that color burn effect. To the fact that you can have a completely different look depending on how dark or light the color is you're using on that pixel layer you're just not going to have that same texture effect that you're having on that color burn so we're going to add a second photo to show this effect off we have this one right here select that sketch effect and everything we did was applied again the only thing you're going to have to do is take that invert adjustment and drop it down to that sketch layer from there hit that FX drop that up preserve alpha to get rid of that border and there we go we automatically have that sketch effect by hitting our macro and then just rearranging the the layers a little bit dropping that invert layer down to the sketch layer and add in that Gaussian blur we can always go back in change the Gaussian blur change up the color of our black and white adjustment I'll add orange to that sketch layer we're gonna drop it down to an overlay a couple other things you can do real quick is you can always add a gradient layer to it add that gradient so we want to go from red to blue we can keep moving that gradient around we can change which size it is what colors we use for it we can turn that gradient off go back to our blue color and then we can turn all the other layers off go back to that original photo use our color picker and select one of the browns out of his eyes we can then go back up to our top pixel layer just make sure the top pixel layer is set to blend mode of color and we can paint that brown in bring that a little bit of his original eye color paint it in both eyes and then we can turn the bottom pixel layer back to red without affecting his eyes using that pixel layer you can actually paint everything in this photo any way you want thank you for watching the tutorial if you have any comments please leave them down below same thing if there's anything you'd like to see in a future video I'd love to hear what other tutorials or tips that you're looking for. But on that note, I hope you all have a fantastic day, and thank you for watching.